All right, we're back on Wormholes. We're on. Now today uh, we have a yeah. we have a guest coming all the way from Perth. We, we've actually had a few people from Perth, haven't we? It seems to be a yeah. bit of a hot spot. There's like a lot a, happening here. Th- it that's seems that's to be what they say about Perth. And, a and, and they're musicians. musicians, mate. And that's the thing. Big time, big time music scene. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. So today we're joined by, would you rather be called, called a comedian or a musician? Because I, I'm, 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 but I'm more of a comic than I'm a musician. A comic, yeah. <laughs> so we've got Matt Stora joining us from Perth. And, you, mate, I tell you what. When I was scrolling through your reels, I think it was your TikTok actually, and and I was like, when I saw that podcast one you did, I was like, oh, man, right. I was like, man, I need to get this guy on the podcast. I was like, that is, <laughs> I lost my mind. It was so funny, dude. Oh, great, perfect meta moment. Yeah, I've had a couple, I got a lot of flack from my podcast mates about that. I actually did like it weirdly enough, like got a lot of podcast invites after really? doing that video. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. It's been it's been good. It's been fun. That's killer, man. Yeah, so, so no, sorry. You, you uh, go, obviously, yeah, uh, stand-up comedian first, I'm assuming, before you've kind of carved out your niche and doing these little funny, uh, like, weird owl kind of, you know, parody song yeah. things where you kind of, like, ad-lib your own little bits and and take things in a, in a bit of a weird direction. Um, how long have you been on stand-up for? I started stand up real early. I was like uh, I was sixteen when I when I did my first set. Um, uh, yeah, and that was kind of I've always done music as part of it, um, mm-hmm. but it was kind of like I was uh, a comedian um, that did music sometimes. But now you know, it, since twenty twenty, I think twenty twenty was a big for some reason a year that everyone changed their mind about everything yep, um, yeah of course. and music was one of those things during lockdown i just started writing a bunch more songs and kind of found a rhythm and now it's primarily what i do and stand up is kind of the sideshow so yeah, okay. yeah. So even on stage do you do like a musical comedy act now as well or you still do classic like you know premise punchline yeah, comedy it's 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 difficult to do like pure musical comedy on stage um so, well especially since my position my tr- instrument that i play live with is a piano mm-hmm. so like i can do that like for fringe festivals and stuff i can bring my piano out and set it up because it's like an hour so i've got all yeah. this time to you know but within like yep. a 10 minute set 15 minute set you can't <laughs> there's not it's not worth it so I, I nowadays i do like a you know most of my set is, is still stand up for like a club set and then i'll finish on a song um but i just do it uh, a cappella like yeah that's killer. justin bieber style yeah yeah, yeah justin bieber okay. style nice <laughs> nice so have you got any of your actual stand up on youtube or anything uh not too much man i mean uh i've got my raw set which was like that's basically how i got proper started when i was um uh 20 i i won wa's raw final raw's like okay. the cool. open mic national competition yeah um i got to go to melbourne and that's kind of where i got properly got my start um so that's that's on youtube um and then probably some bits and bobs here and there but i've kept most of it off youtube um just because i didn't want to burn my material (laughs) (laughs) i was i was waiting for my next netflix special um which will probably look a lot different now but yeah um, yeah yeah yeah, most most of the stuff online now, obviously, is, is my musical stuff. If you were going to make well, a Netflix special, would it be more Bo Burnham like, like like almost yeah. like a... Uh, a lot more. Yeah, yeah, a lot more than um, probably pre twenty twenty. I would have tried to do a lot of a lot of stand up. I think even when I was doing stand up, like it's uh, not. It's still a little bit weird. Like it's not quite the rhythm. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard okay. to explain. But yeah. Well, that's what I went looking for. So I'm I'm a comedian as well. I've been doing it for ten years down oh, here in South Australia. So I went looking for some of your stand up straight away. So I was scrolling <laughs> through okay. your Instagram, and every time it was only a photo of you on stage and not and not some uh, juicy content. So I am uh, I'll, I'll right. have to go back and watch. That. I just appreciate, especially with like um like I mean for me personally and uh, uh, Ryan will tell you as well. Like I'm a massive massive Bo Burnham fan, so I'm always interested mm-hmm. to see how that, like you said, that bit of a strange you know obviously in his stage shows as well you know there's a lot of the filler tim mentions another person who does yeah. like a very yeah, obscure stand up performance in between songs and i find yeah. it's such an art form it's so different than 
actual stand up because like it, you can just take it in such a obscure direction knowing that uh, i think it's it's this thing where like you know you've got a song coming so i can do things that could completely crash and burn and like a normal set that no one would mm. ever do because i've got the safety net of a song that i'm about to go yeah. into in a second that will completely yeah. make everyone forget the ridiculous shit that i just said so i think mm. that like you know musical comics and like you said you know for you finishing on a song you can test the waters a bit more and be a little bit more adventurous knowing that if worse comes to worse, I'm going to take it in a completely different direction and do a song at the end. So we might as well see how much in the deep. Would you agree with that kind of sentiment? Um, I, I agree to an extent. I, I think it's a blessing and a curse because because you're right. Like if I know I've got a really good song at the end of my set in the back pocket, I'm like, okay, they're not into my stand up, but I'm about to do a 180 and win them over. But what I always say is that like, because I think stand ups kind of, I get that they they like they have that. It's not even a criticism. It's just kind of a, like you always get applause for a song. You know, you always like yeah. it, it seems easier. But I'll tell you that I would way rather do a stand up joke that bombs than start doing a song. And in verse one, I'm like, oh, they're not into this. They fucking yeah, hate this. True. And I've got two and a half minutes to go Have of you had this that? song that no one's into. Oh, of course. Man, yeah, of no course. shit. No shit. Um, yeah, absolutely. That is that is the most painful on stage experience possible. So there's yeah. like, yeah, it swings around roundabouts. Like, yeah, I think songs are generally um more like you know, easier to get applause for and people kind of lean into like lean forward for them, but yeah, they they can if if it's not working, it's it's hell. At least with stand up, you can change it up or like make fun of what's happening. But yeah. in a, in in a, in a song, you're stuck. <laughs> you have to yeah. see it all the yeah. way through. And you're right. I think it's something as well where it kind of does put a bit more pressure on your stand up, right? Because the stand up can like if you lose them in the stand up, then the chances that the song's going to be the redeeming quality does become a little bit lower because they're just going to be like, "What is this?" Yeah, like, they're not into your character. To fire. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah, no it, it almost might all. make it worse. Like if you can imagine talking to a guy who's trying to make you laugh and it's not funny, and then he tries karaoke, like it's like, <laughs> yeah, oh, starts, yeah, 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 and he starts getting worse. singing at you like <laughs> some Lady noise. Gaga parody or whatever it is, and you're like, <laughs> totally. I'm gonna headbutt this guy in the smokers area afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's uh, definitely not a not a guarantee uh, of success. I used to do much longer songs. Like when I first started doing musical comedy, it was basically because i booked like an hour show and i had about 30 minutes of material so i was trying to pad it out as much as i could um and i'd write songs that were like five six minutes long so you yeah, can imagine no uh yeah, yeah the, the fatigue sets in musical journey uh, <laughs> at that point <laughs> yeah like a bohemian rhapsody of of comedy yeah so do you reckon that uh now that you've started doing more you know clip based stuff or minute 30 second minute and a half kind of songs how has that translated then over into your your performances your live your live set yeah kind of i mean as i said like in 2020 when i kind of really found my stride with the musical stuff um i already decided like my songs should be two two minutes max um that's just based on like because i did want to make online content and you don't really see comedy music go further than that if yeah. you look at like you know burbanum stuff and like lonely island stuff and all that viral content it's all shorter form a minute and a half to two minutes so um i was aiming at that already and um i I, re I really enjoy the process of cutting something down i always write a song i still write a song that's too long but then i get to go like oh i, I think this verse is kind of lame anyway and you end up with this really like tight um, product mm, where you're really yeah. into every piece of it so uh, I, I i now enjoy the process of of making shorter stuff yeah yeah that's cool so how how often do you find yourself thinking of like new ideas for content because it looks like on, on your feed you, it's pretty consistent yeah well recently i've been holding i, I started out this year i was like, i'm gonna post once a week and now i'm on twice a week Wow. Um, so yeah, a lot of it's like the parody stuff. That's like the the, the way I can keep it consistent. But that's yeah. like pretty much the way I maintain my content and maintain my audience while I'm making something. Like right now, I'm like halfway through making the next um, proper like original song. So I'm just putting out parody stuff to bide my time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the process. 
Yeah, killer. So have you released like uh, original stuff like through like Spotify and stuff like that as well? So you've actually got some like a catalog of music or? Yeah, not yet. Uh, my my TikTok is probably the best catalog of my work yet. There's like a play, you can hit the playlist that's like original songs, uh, and then you okay. can just scroll through them all. Um, uh, I I want to. I honestly, I just am too lazy. <laughs> Yeah. Like I have had a lot of people posting all that kind of be like, put this on Spotify. And I'm like, dude, that'd be awesome. But I, I just, it's one of those things where I just have to look into how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'll, not too uh, difficult. You could go through someone like DistroKid or TuneCore that would make it pretty easy. Yeah. And it's pretty cheap okay. as well. Probably only be like 30, 40 bucks to get a song up. Is that like to get a license or like per song? To, per, per song, I assume. I'm oh, not okay. too sure. Right. I'm not too sure about a full, I've never put like a full album or anything like that on Spotify, but every time for me, it was yeah. about 30, 40 bucks. So for a single. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think my plan is probably to do all these songs in, in, in shorter form because we're on TikTok, they're like a minute. So it's really yeah. like um, pulled down the length of my songs. Um, but I'll, I'll just see what the really popular ones are and then I might develop them because the dream is I want to put an album together. Fuck yeah. Um, and so, yeah, get it, get them all like more properly produced and longer. Um, and yeah, basically just have the like, greatest hits kind Fuck of thing. Yeah. Do you feel like people mm. have gravitated towards a certain type of song or a certain type of content from yourself? Um, not really. I think I've just gotten better at uh, posting content in terms of like there's a sort of instinct about like oh you, you need like something really hooky at the start yeah like those first few frames are the most important and um you know the sounds that are obnoxious and make people want to scroll like things like that i yeah. think i've just gotten better at, at, at um honing that side of the craft i don't i don't know if i've had like certain genres do better than others yeah okay was was there a certain like you know you said in that 2020 was there like a clip that you made like it, it was a complete throwaway that you were like this is just garbage like not garbage but you know what i mean like something that you were mm. just like and it just like went stupidly like big and you were like oh okay maybe i'm i'm going about this in the wrong way and this is kind of the you know the kind of thing was there something that kind of like really was that light bulb in your mind that uh, I've got to kind of change my approach to the shorter form stuff? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, not so much in, in 2020, I just started writing the songs. I, I put together a live show called hot nonsense, which I'm coming to Adelaide with, by the way. Oh, fuck uh, yeah. oh really? Next, next year. Yeah. I want okay. to, uh, yeah. Next year for your fringe festival. For your um, fringe? Sure. Oh, I've, killer. I've never been. So oh, I, you didn't last year I, no, no, that, that I, I made a, a show called Hot Nonsense, which was like all the songs I wrote in lockdown. It's like 15 songs. And it's basically audience, particip- they, ch- they choose the songs blindly. They choose it via like uh, the the subject matter and whether it's shit or good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's a real fun show. I, I won like a couple of awards, like local awards for it. Um, so, yeah, next year I'm touring it. Um, but yeah, that that that's what 2020 was about. Uh, but to answer your question, Justin, um, definitely, uh, when I posted that uh, Kate Bush parody, that was pretty much um, what kicked things off. I did a, a parody of the Running Up That Hill, um, which was yeah, exactly as you said, it was garbage. It was like a throwaway thing um, of like an inner monologue that I had in my head as I was trying to sleep about like making a deal with God, but about something stupid and like just I don't know. I posted it. It literally took me like an hour total to make. Um, and it got like, I think it's up to like five and a half million views or something. Now. Hell, that's mm-hmm. crazy. Um, so that's yeah, crazy. exactly the experience as you described, like literally just a throwaway thing that I was like almost embarrassed about. <laughs> I posted it <laughs> um, yeah. and it exploded. It's a confidence boost, man. It's oh, like, yeah, oh nice. shit. Like I need to trust myself a bit more. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, I saw a, f- a, f- a good few of them had over a million plays now as well. So that would also be like, all right, I'm definitely doing something correct here, you know? Like, yeah, for sure, it's been really good, man. The last like since that video, the last like couple months have been, um, yeah, just having a consistent audience um, yeah. turn up for the stuff I'm making, which is something I've dreamed about having for years. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's been really rewarding. Well, hopefully that translates into your live shows and stuff, and um. Yeah, when you get around to these different places, you've always you built up that more of a core audience as well. So hopefully, yeah, that can translate. Yeah, I mean that was the plan. I I basically started posting out of frustration of like, um, you know, I know I have all this stuff and I it's good and I want to perform for people, but like, you know, I, I knew if I went to Adelaide, they'd be like, who? Um, yeah. So yeah, the online way, obviously, like it's almost annoying 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there's no other way for a comedian to really make it anymore. It used yeah. to be like you network, you rub the right shoulder, someone gets you a five minutes on a talk show and then off you go. But it's like it's a whole different game now. You have to be online. So 100%. that's what I'm doing. We, we talk about it on this pod so much, but this podcast was born out of um, in 2020. I had a massive fringe schedule here in Adelaide. I did about 25 shows in in the month across the month. Damn. Dude. And then yeah. we, we went into lockdown. So and I was like, mm. you know, Go, that was my most hectic. So I'd never done a fringe show before, but I, I was like picked for a next gen show, which was like 10 nights. And then I had my own run on a split bill of, of 12 nights and then a few other, you know, two like two shows in one night type thing. So it was like the most insane thing ever. And it was really like, I love this. This like I was, you know, really found my my passion for it in that time and then went into lockdown straight away afterwards. And I was like, needed a creative outlet of of some kind. Um, yeah. And so that's what this this podcast was born of, so that I've got something that if there's nothing going on or we're in a lockdown or whatever, I've got something that like we are right now over Zoom, we can still, mm. you know, make content and do something where you feel like you're creating something. So it's uh, it's crazy how much that insane time was the spawn of something for for so many people especially in the creative Dude. world yeah yeah so many people i know and i what, what what i find most fascinating is the amount of comics uh i know that kind of changed frequencies as in yeah. they were stand-ups and then they were like nah i want to i want to do like vlogging i want to do like i want to do like online stuff or they yeah. have decided like oh nah i like um, I want to do like art, like I want to like do painting and like sort of mix my comedy with that. So like it, they kind of, a lot of people left the scene in a way, but to like go do what their actual passion was the whole time. It's yeah. so weird how everyone just had a, like a kind of a wake up call. It's awesome. It's great. Yeah. It um, was, it the was best a strange thing that came time. out of it. Yeah. It was a strange yeah. time. Cause I remember I was making music by myself for ages and then around about 2020, um, I said to like my old housemate, uh, I was just like, we need to, we need to start a band, you know? Mm. So basically like at the same time that we started the podcast, we started a band and like, yeah, it was basically like a complete like retuning of the frequency. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure. Into, I think as everyone just, I think what happened is everyone just stopped the rat race in terms yeah. of like, we're all in the, like we all are doing what we think we're meant to be doing. Yeah. Um, and then when we have to stop, we're like, why am I doing it? Like, yeah, what exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think that's probably the, the, the quickest way to describe what happened, but yeah, it definitely happened to me for sure. Yeah. And so then I even, oh, sorry, sorry, Ryan. I even went through like a thing of like, when that, then I started the pod and I was like, maybe I'm done with stand up. Like maybe this is like, I enjoyed the the process of making the podcast so much that I was like, maybe like, maybe that takes too much out of me. Like now I think about how hectic that fringe schedule was. Maybe this is more. And then again, like stand up starts coming back and I went back on stage and I was like, no, 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 no. This is still definitely <laughs> yeah. has a place in my life, but it's just like weird that whole. And I guess, you know, if you're not forced to like really stop and reflect on things like again maybe i would have burnt out in another way and then ended up giving up comedy for the worst reasons or whatever you know what i mean like it gives you a chance to like you know i think we were i had about six months off of doing any shows here and then you go back and you do them and the first one was pretty rough actually i got married the day before so my first one back i was like oh <laughs> okay yeah i was pretty okay. hung over like it was the yeah, whole, yeah. then i think it was like my second show after that and i was like i don't know okay no i still fucking love this shit like it's just you know but I, yeah. i'm glad i had that opportunity to like stop look at doing something else you know put my focus elsewhere and then come back and, and re-fall in love with something that i've already been doing for like eight years at that point and now you know i've just hit 10 so um i guess it's now it kind of forces us to think about like how do we make, force ourselves to do that in another five years time if we're not mm. in a pandemic like how do we like force ourselves to go clearly shake-ups and and changes are good how do we stop ourselves from getting stuck in that rat race and ending up you know not achieving all that we could have um when you don't get forced to kind of um you know reflect and slow down yeah, bang on, man. I mean, I, I literally have said that before. I was like, I, I think we should do this every five years. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I don't obviously not have a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But some form of like, all right, everyone stop, chill out, evaluate. Are you wasting your time? Life is short. Um, yeah, I don't know. I maybe we that could that could be a, a, a movement of some kind that we can make. <laughs> five year the, the, the five year movement. 
Yeah, the five year movement. Yeah. Reflection week or something. Right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, exactly. Well, they just Take cancel the all the arts for like <laughs> six months. They just go, yep, no, nah, every club's closed and every, yeah. you know, performance center is closed and everyone has to go, oh shit. Yeah. What am I going to yeah. do? It shows who's um, really hungry. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of benefits to it. I mean, obviously, you can't force this on people. It'd be, yeah, it'd be no, an opt-in. no, no. It'd be an opt-in. But, yeah, it would uh, definitely <laughs> be an opt-in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, tell us about your musical inspiration then, because I'm I'm curious. You know, like you said, a lot of it's piano based. A lot of what your stuff you've been putting out is very piano based. Um, what, what inspires you, and what's kind of like, yeah, driven you? Um, uh, yeah, it's not so much like piano. Like I, I just learned it as a kid and then I watched School of Rock when I was 12 and realized oh, that piano yeah. wasn't as cool as drums. Um, so yeah. I'm actually a drummer. I actually oh, like okay. taught drums. Um, like that's, that's like my experience. Yeah. Well, that's like, you know, I did that for like 12 years as opposed to doing piano for like four, but in yeah, terms okay. of comedy, I can't really drag a drum kit on That stage. would be sick though. It that would, would be, be sick. sick. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But apart from like classic punchline enunciation there's not <laughs> yeah. much you can do there um so yeah that's 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 why the piano uh comes out but i've recently been trying to look at something else because i'm just enjoying not sitting down I'm, yeah with hot nonsense i'm I'm standing i have a mic and i'm like just j- it's just me performing um i do have like some piano songs that i go to but it's mostly that i'm really enjoying that so I've been, i'm looking into like key tars and yeah, <laughs> like something okay. cool that i can transition to um key tars is the most terms 80s of- looking thing i've ever seen in my life hey I know, but a fr- uh, uh, I, uh, a friend of mine let me let me try one of his, and I was just like, "This is transcendently good." This oh, is so- really? Have you seen that? Have you seen that guy? The like the kazoo kalele thing that he's got. Like it's got kazoo kalele. Yeah, so there's a guy that does all these like parodies. I'll find it and I'll send it to you. And he's got like a kazoo on the end of like a key tar. So it's got like two wow. sets of keys and strings. And he like does parodies and singing with all of these. Where's like, the this kazoo? Mash of does he just hold it in his mouth? On the top. It's like, yeah, what? it's hanging off the top of the like, fr- oh. uh, whatever. Like where they, where they put their cigarettes sometimes. Um, like between the tuning things yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah, right yeah. yeah between the tuning pegs is a kazoo and then yeah nice. there's obviously yeah the the strings and the keys and then he sings as well and, and it's, he's, uh, he's got a yeah. kick drum he's got a kick drum at his feet and he's got a like a, a drumstick on a his hat and he hits the fucking cymbal with it <laughs> oh damn i've Not seen that i've seen that yeah i've seen that maybe there's another guy that does that um I yeah. the kazoo cool. maybe though. like have that have that like bob dylan outfit where they're, they're like holding the harmonica but it's just a kazoo in front of his mouth oh mm-hmm. yeah um, about that'd that. be cool yeah but um sick. yeah i don't know i'm I'm looking into, into doing something uh different life but i don't know in terms of um inspiration like yeah all the greats man bo burnham massive um inspiration for me um to the point that i haven't watched inside yet is that really weird? oh my god that is strange i have a weird thing i've run it by other people because i'm like does this make me a like a weirdo but i'm like i i, I know it's so good yeah that i'll be demotivated does that make oh, sense Oh, okay you reckon it's yeah. like a yeah okay you're like it's it's too good now i'm gonna feel bad about myself like honestly i think i'll watch it and be like why am i trying <laughs> yeah, Bo yeah, yeah, Bo yeah. burnham exists yeah, we don't need yeah. any more like brunette, slightly effeminate white guys to sing. <laughs> We're full, right? Uh, um, <laughs> I, so I, I haven't seen it yet, but I, I, have, I have utmost respect for that man. Um, also, love um, uh, um, Lonely Island, uh, yeah. and you know Tim Mention and Flight of the Concords. Oh, bro. Yeah, oh, big time. Goodness. We were talking about um, them recently, actually, weren't we? We were. Yeah, we were singing the whole Brett, you got it going yeah, on Brett, in my house. Oh, going. dude, that's, that's oh, probably the only Father oh. the Concord song I know all the way. Every, sometimes, like, you know, in a quiet moment, I'll just to myself, I'll be like, can I see the lyrics? I'll just say that to myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do, you know, do you know what started this, <laughs> this, us talking about it as well is that our best mate was like, we were all at my house for dinner. <laughs> And my wife said to him, oh, your beard is good. And then that's what, in my head, I was like, mm. that's just a compliment about your beard being good being before good. it goes yeah, into yeah, the song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> started the whole tangent of us talking about how incredible that show was. I remember it came on after Rove and like, you know, Rove was just like something that I watched religiously. It was like OC, Rove, and then Flight of the Concords was like a Tuesday night in, uh, yeah. in Adelaide here. And I remember like, had no idea who they were and that first episode came on um and there's the song like you're so beautiful like a tree like it's just 
it just and I was like, what the hell is this magic? And then I was hooked for the rest and of the Arge season. And Arj Barker. And Arj Barker's, yeah. yeah. Arj Barker, of course. Was. Yeah. It's uh yeah, no, dude, it's a hell of a show. I don't I don't think we knew we were in a golden age at the time. Yeah. Uh, no. But we certainly were. Although I think we are, and, and it might just be because uh, you know I'm I'm doing it, so I'm biased, and also the algorithm is feeding me that stuff. But it feels like we're entering a new golden age of musical comedy, um, in terms of like Bo's back, yeah, and he's doing it's like fucking insane shit. Um, Mark Rebier, you into Mark Rebier? He's I massive. Heard of him. No, I don't think I've heard of him. Oh, dude, look him up. Mark M A R C Revier. Yeah. I, I'm not even going to try and spell it. It's French. Okay, um, all right. Canadian dude, and he does he does like improv musical stuff. He just does streams, and he'll like put a bass line down. Oh, you're talking then, about like, that. Like, you're, you're talking about the fucking um, get the fuck out of bed, bitch, go. Like um, yes, like, yes, like a, and he also does like let me in. I'm trying to fuck. Yeah, yeah, no. Yes. Was, you showed me that. That yeah. was the guy oh, when, I, when I picked you up last week for the podcast in the car, and you were like, "What the fuck's this weird, like, like house sounding shit?" Then he's like, "Get the fuck out of bed, bitch, go!" <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It yeah, yeah. So good. Us. I was like, we should do a live stream where we get a DJ in and we'll just like riff over the top of a DJ set after we like interview an Adelaide DJ. And then we'll just like get him to like play something and we'll just like, have a microphone and just talk shit over the top of it. Cause that's what we do when we're listening yeah. to music mucking around anyway. So yeah, we, so it turns out we have heard of the Yeah, that guy. Yeah, he's, he's, he's in that stage of fame where like ev- everyone has seen a clip of him. They just don't know it's him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he's, he's blowing up. I don't know. There's just a lot of musical comics killing it right now, so it's an exciting time. So, what about music itself then? Just flat old, good old school music. Yeah, what are you, no, what are you into? It. I have a very varied taste in music. I love, I love lyrics. I love like real, real like dense, intricate lyric work. So, I have a, a deep appreciation for like rap, yeah, um, and hip hop, anything that does that. Like Bob Dylan, I'm big on Bob Dylan, cool, because um, he's like. A rapper from the sixties, basically. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. Uh. But yeah. Also, I, I don't know. Really varied. I have like guilty pleasures. Uh. Like I like Coldplay. I say that proudly. Not the new stuff. Viva La Vida and earlier. yeah, the old um, stuff. Yeah. There's a few Coldplay yeah, bangers yeah. out there. There are, man, yeah. and we shouldn't be afraid to say. Not at all. Um, Not at all. <laughs> what about Nickelback? Oh yeah, no fuck Nickelback. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, <man. nah. laughs> we don't go that. Far. I'm not brave enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it's weird. Like they're not bad, are they? They're just so beige. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah like it's yeah, like yeah. They're still, we don't hate them because they're bad. We just yeah, they, anyway. It's vanilla. That's um, it. Yeah, I guess. So. Yeah, but yeah, ma- mainly I, I get a, a re- real kick from from like good lyrics because that's what I get a kick out of making. So yeah, kill um, it, man. Yeah, very well, good. Uh, I think we should get into the questions. I reckon. Give us I reckon so too. To... So we've got this uh, at the end of each episode when we have a guest on. We have a series of questions we call the questions, right? Okay. And there and right. there and there are a few predetermined stingers that we that we flick out. So do you want to deliver him number one, J Man? Absolutely, I will. Uh, we it was it's kind of the perfect segue because we were just talking about you know what your musical interests were, but now we need you to give us your favorite song of all time. Oh fuck, dude! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the reaction every time gets us, man. We so wow. Good. We do say that we you're allowed to give a top three, but we still would like a number one. Okay, well that's okay. Um, Carnival, you know the band Carnival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perth band. Shout out, um, uh, Dead Man by Carnival. A good a twelve minute banger. Fuck yeah. Um, what else? Uh, I really like. Uh, it's all right, Ma by Bob Dylan. Yeah, it's a great gotta song. throw some Bob Dylan in there. Gotta throw about some him. Bob Dylan in there. I did. <laughs> I did talk about him. Oh, now I feel like I have to rat it out at three. Um, can I just say what my current song that I'm enjoying? Yeah, is? yeah. Go I mean, look on. at my yeah, thing. Song of the week. It's probably not one of my favorites of all times. Show us your song of the week. Oh, "Money for Nothing" by the Dire Straits. Oh, oh my what, a what a classic! What a good Dude, song. I I did not know that song existed until like a month ago. My dad really? just played it, and I was like, you... "What is this? This is amazing." You need to um, listen yeah, to two dude. more songs by them. One is you talked about long songs. One is a 13 minute song called "Telegraph Road." 
Oh shit! By okay, Dyer all right. Straits is one of my favorite songs of all time as well. Like it's right up there. And okay, then you nice. would have heard this song, surely Sultans, Sultans of Swing. You would yeah, have heard. Sultans. Oh yeah. man, yeah, of yeah, course. of course, yeah. That I was gonna. Well, when you hadn't heard money for nothing. I was yeah, like, yeah, I know. Well, well, and that was their biggest, like, it was such a piss. Do you know the story behind the whole like money? Yeah, no, I think that's I why like, I love it. I think it's because, like, yeah, because he's like, actually writing down ad lib what some some guys saying about uh, the musicians on MTV while they're delivering something, um, <laughs> and you can so tell that it's it's genuine yeah. Um, dialogue. Yeah, um, man. Like, who, you can absolutely tell it's real. Yeah, because who has lyrics like "We need to move these refrigerators"? Like, who? Like, where <laughs> yeah. does that? Where I'm sure, I'm sure that? he wasn't. I'm sure he wasn't talking in rhyme. I'm sure that was added. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but like just the way he en enunciates it. There's, there's even a, I don't, like some versions with a slur in it. Is uh, there? <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred okay. percent. He he refers to them as as uh, homosexuals in an impolite way. Oh, um, okay. But it, you know. A, a delivery driver in the eighties, you can't really cancel. Oh them. yeah, of course. No. Um, Too late for that. But, it's funny you yeah. mentioned Carnival because a guy. So there's a band from Perth as well called Patient Sixty Seven, and he just like the 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 front man that we had um, for from that band. He just uh, did guest vocals on a band that was opening for Carnival uh, like last weekend. Like I think to the weekend. Oh yeah, just that would have been. I know. I know where that venue was because I really wanted to go to the gig. There you uh, go. Yeah, and Cog was, was on was and on everything. There. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, jealous. Wow, good on him, man. That'd be, yeah, hey, yeah, that'd be a he sick was, show uh, player. He was super, super chuffed about uh, yeah, getting up and and doing. I think it was the band called Relica with a chick with a chick uh, vocalist as well. So they sounded sick. pretty cool from what I from That's what I killer. heard. That's killer. Um, question number two, man, lay it on him. All right, question number two. This would be a hard. One. This will be probably be harder for him. Or well, maybe not. Actually, oh, shit. what's your well? Who is your favorite comedian or comedic actor? Oh, that is hard. Actually, no, I think that's going to be easier. Uh, I'm going to say Dimitri Martin. Dimitri Martin oh, okay. yeah. is my favorite comic of all time. We haven't I don't had think... Dimitri Martin yet. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, that's no, bad, but also good. <laughs> he is um, great, though. He's so... Dimitri Martin is the reason I started, man. I, I saw True. Dimitri's set when he did Rove. Um and as like a kid, I would have been like two road plugs in one episode. Oh, bro. Well. Like, I know. Get shout out Ro. Oh, he's in Perth. Road. He's living in Perth. We, is he? we gig with Rove all the yeah. time now. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. He's always at the the comedy lounge because I've had a few mates yeah. that have been going over from Adelaide, being like, "Yeah, I was just hanging out with fucking Rove last night." So. He, he's he's kicking out. Of, he's kicking around a bunch. It's, oh, it's no, real good. Um, but yeah, you got to say Demetri Martin. Sorry, Rove. Yeah, um, sorry, Rove. Um, he's the reason I started. Yeah, that's cool. That's killer killer do you want to hit him with number three jay mizzle yeah question number three uh have you ever meditated before and if you have what's your sort of experience with it ah man my brother would love this question he's a big old meditator i um uh not really i did the uh, when i got my apple watch product placement give oh, the money apple somebody give, give the money a sponsor. Apple. someone give him yeah. a sponsorship no no you this is your podcast uh, oh, you planted yeah. me. You planted me for this. Uh, yeah, we right. secretly um, work for Apple, bro. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's got this thing called the Breathe app, um, which is like basically it, it's you know the, the classic like breathe in for this long, hold it for this long, okay. exhale for this long, um, and it like just vibrates on your wrist gently to tell you so you don't have to look at it. That's kind of so cool. I did that. That's where I found I, I I've experienced the potential of meditation because I was doing that during lockdown and I was like. Man, this is like a drug. <laughs> like yeah, I feel, yeah. like I feel light and like clear and um, yeah. But I, I haven't got into the the habit. My brother's really been trying to get me yeah. uh, to meditate. So it is hard um, to get into the habit, though. Yeah, but I think that's kind of the point as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it to, was it's easy. To overcome, well, overcome the, thing, the monkey brain. The thing we talk about on the pod all the time with so many guests, though, I think it's probably something you know that you would even now realize when I talk about it is that like your your creative process or like making up silly like lyrics to a song while you're thinking of something else like that can all be meditative as well right it doesn't have to be concentrating on your breathing it can be if you're able to get into a flow state where all you're concentrating on is that one thing that's meditative as far as i'm concerned and a lot of oh. people you know seem to agree so you probably find mm. that you do in your creative process actually enter like a, a state of meditation more than you know you probably know that you do if you're thinking about it just as you know breathe in for this long hold it for that long or you know concentrate only on my breathing so yeah you probably do do it more than you even know you do 
Yeah, absolutely, dude. Well, if that's your definition, it's just like losing yourself in in something like a task like that, especially yeah. creatively. Then yeah, that's my favorite feeling in the world. Yeah, fine. yeah, um, yeah, for sure. And you do it like you said. So you come out of that like the breathing thing is is a good thing, but you come out of that as well sometimes. Like oh my god, like I feel yeah, I feel really good after going through that. Yeah, so. like being on stage, like. Mm. massive rush yeah oh yeah and you can't concentrate on anything else uh except for you know what you're trying to do up there um, yeah absolutely should we hit him with the final question then my man yeah i think we should man uh this one's the all important one the one the that every every uh every guest gets you know, fan every, it comes to watch this and they they <laughs> want to know what it, what the next answer is going to be oh, so boy. for you matt uh would you rather fight a horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses. All right. Luckily, I've thought about this deeply. <laughs> yes, he uh, <laughs> meditated on it. <laughs> I, uh, it's got to be a hundred ho- uh, duck-sized horses, man. It's got to yeah? be, dude. I, I, a horse-sized duck could kill you in one peck. I don't know. Yeah. If I could one like, peck. It's it's not so much about how easy a hundred duck-sized horses would be. It's about how fucking fatal <laughs> a horse-sized duck would be. It's like, what's would, worse, like, like you know. Yeah, exactly. If it just goes boom once, hits you full full ball as as ducks do, yeah. um, that would just fold you in half. I don't. That's game over. But you can run from because they'd be smaller. They wouldn't be able to, you know. You don't do reckon a horse. You, you don't reckon. And you could just punt fast. them. You could just punt them. There's no <laughs> amount of punting that's going to take down a horse sized duck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> About yeah. time I also, got one back I've, on my team. <laughs> yeah, are you are you team? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're split. Yeah, we're split. Um, I I would rather dude. fight the 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 big the big uh fucking horse sized duck and he'd rather the little horses. It's funny. We actually found a video semi recently of um this thing like played out. So it's like this cool video of this one guy in like a hallway and he sees this big duck in the darkness with red eyes and then it fucks him up and then he kind of like respawns and then he and then out of nowhere he starts hearing. And these fucking all these little horses run and trample, and he and he tries to punt them and kick him away, but he can't, and he gets overrun, and he gets st- like stomped to death. Mm. It's so the answer is that you die either way. You're dying either yeah, way, exactly. It. Probably, yeah. yeah. But no, nah, for me, if, if I was in the Coliseum of of that particular uh, situation, it's got to be got to be the little guys. It's horse all day. Yeah, I've well, also been uh, attacked by a swan before, so birds can be vicious, man. Oh yeah, hundred yeah, percent. They uh, are they, vicious. Uh, they uh, they can be crazy, man. They're like geese on steroids. It's nuts. Fucking oath. Well, Matt, Fuck we've got oath. a couple of minutes before uh, Zoom's going to absolutely cuck us. So please, the floor is yours. Plug everything yeah. you've got going Give on us at the, the moment, oh, dude. Dude, make sure you listen to this podcast. That's a useless Thank ad. You. Thanks, man. To it already. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you find me on TikTok. That's where it's popping off. Apparently, um, at Matt Story here on TikTok. Same tag on. Uh, Instagram. I prefer to grow my Instagram, but the algorithm sucks. It does uh, suck, bro. It does <laughs> suck. Sucks so it's bad. Hardcore. Um, so yeah, find me on there. My YouTube's also. I'm gonna. I, I'm still gonna get around to um, uploading all my original songs. I'm gonna keep the parody stuff off YouTube, but I'll put all my um, yeah original songs up there. Um, and look out for for hot nonsense. That'll be uh, yeah. in a city near you if you're in awesome. Australia. Um, sometime in in 2023. So yeah, well, of, I'm running I'm running a fringe show again next year, so I'll be around the garden for the whole time. So I'll definitely Great, come man. check your show out, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll come along. See too, you there. Man. Sounds That'd like a plan. Good. All right, thank you very much, Matt. We'll uh, let you go, man. Thanks for coming on Wormholes. Appreciate it. No, my pleasure, guys. No, I appreciate it. Good to meet Cheers, you, boys. Man. See you, you later, too, bro. Bye. Bye.